The great 88, Andrew George, who caught the game-winning touchdown pass in overtime to beat Utah in 2009, joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline to celebrate 88 days away. Andrew, nice to have you back on the show. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. How often do you get asked about the scenario and game that I just reminisced about, the 2009 overtime win against Utah? Uh, anytime somebody hears my name and then realize I've lost like 40 pounds and then they realize, oh, wait, you're that same Andrew George who played the, played, uh, played at BYU. And then they ask me about the catch. So that's about it. So you've lost 40 pounds. What did you weigh and what are you now? Oh man, I was, I was like 250 when I was playing. I think that was kind of where I capped out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not 250 anymore. I look like a wide receiver, not a tight end. So, De- yeah, Dennis Pitta had a similar experience when he was uh, a gangly walk-on receiver, <laughs> right? And then he beefed up. Just part of the deal, and there have been uh, certain guys that do this, but 210, you're kind of natural weight, but you beefed up to play football? Right. Yeah, I know, for sure. It's it's funny once you start kind of working out that way and uh, and lifting all the weights and eating all the calories that you have to eat to maintain that weight, it just starts coming off. But unfortunately, uh, most of the muscle mass starts coming off and some of that that fat weight just shows itself a little better so that's that's not very much fun very slimmed (laughs) down and toned version of andrew george is with us on byu sports nation Uh, our fans across the country and world love to hear about what's going on with the former players so uh, give us an update on what you're doing now and what life is like for you at this moment you bet yeah a couple years ago we moved out to colorado springs i've been working out here in healthcare administration uh running a uh a small about 80 bed little hospital here in the Springs and um, uh, commute every once in a while up to Denver and, and uh, do some things up there. But, uh, but yeah, working in healthcare. So last year, obviously four and nine wasn't the greatest season for BYU football. They're trying to bounce back. We'll ask you about Matt Bushman in a moment and the tight ends and whatnot, but what's your perception of kind of where BYU football is at right now and where they hope to be? You know, I, I kind of think the program's at a little bit of a crossroads to be honest. Um, and, and ultimately, the, the athletic department in general is at a crossroads. I mean, the, the whole, you know, uh, being independent and, and having some coaching turnover and some of these things, obviously coming off a season like, like last season. Uh, but, you know, it's only going to continue to get tougher. Um, I think they've done a really great job bringing in some guys with experience uh, who can develop a culture, uh, hopefully, of winning again. A guy like uh, Grimes, who has been at BYU and, and experienced uh, – that turnaround and, and the winning tradition at BYU. Um, but, uh, man, I, I just look at the program and I look at the athletic department in general, and it concerns me a little bit just because, you know, independence, you're kind of in limbo. You know, uh, I think people get a little anxious, and the schedules that we're trying to play just don't really match up all that great with, with uh, some of the talent that BYU has. So where are you hoping BYU goes? What direction? Yeah. Well, I actually read something not too long ago about it, about Jerem's opinion on, on the schedule. So I'm actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of on, I, I'm a little bit on, on uh, Jerem's team here. To be honest, I, Finally, somebody joined me. Thank you, Andrew. It, it's the unpopular opinion, but, and the reason why I feel that way is I look at the past and what made BYU successful and what built the BYU brand. And it wasn't playing in a power five conference. It was playing, uh, you know, in the WAC and then ultimately in the Mountain West Conference and succeeding in that conference every single year, winning 10 games, winning the conference, uh, you know, beating one or two P5 teams. And, and that was, that was uh, really the magic potion for BYU to build their brand over the last 30 years. Um, and ultimately, I, I'm just not sure BYU has, has, can recruit the talent, and in part because, uh, you know, restriction, you know, I call them restrictions, but, but honor code and academic standards, it makes it really hard to get certain guys into school and have them succeed here. Um, so you look at those two things, um, and then you just look at uh, perhaps the resources that BYU has in comparison to some of, these, some of these other P5 schools, and it's just a little bit different. So personally, I, I think, you know, BYU would be better served in a G5 conference. Again, I know that's not the popular opinion, but – I think, uh, you know, there, there's just hard times continue to be ahead because you look at this schedule, I think it's in like 2020 where they're playing, 
uh, man, I, I looked at it the other day, but it's crazy. I don't see how BYU even makes a bowl game with a schedule like that, even with a talented team. Yeah, seven power fives in 2020, and not just any power fives, typically the upper tier of those power five yeah. conferences. Andrew George yep. with us on BYU Sports Nation, the great 88. So with the independent schedule in play this year, and we've talked a ton about it ad nauseum at Wisconsin, at Washington, at Arizona to open up the season, Cal at home, then you finish the regular season at Utah. It is loaded. What would qualify as success this season for BYU football? You know, I, I think for sure if they, if they make a bowl game, uh, that would be a success, obviously a step up from last year. I think anything that shows progress from what they did last year, it's going to be it's going to take a couple years for them to really be in that, you know, uh, eight or nine wins category again. Um, so I think it's going to take some time. So I think if they make a bowl game, I think if they get six or seven wins, it's, it's successful. I think if they beat Utah, it's a very successful season. Absolutely. You mentioned Jeff Grimes and his return. He's the offense coordinator. Now you were a freshman on that 06 team. So what, what were your um, thoughts about Jeff Grimes and your interaction with him when he was the offensive line coach? Uh, Jeff Grimes is, is well respected by the players. Um, he has a very commanding voice. When he speaks, you, you sit up and you listen. Um, he's got the experience to back that up. Obviously a guy who's, who's won a national championship. Um, he, uh, he knows football. He's been successful. Um, and one of the, I think the biggest thing he'll probably bring uh, to the team is, is discipline and effort, which uh, in my opinion was one of the things that was lacking, at least from, you know, from the team in general, but definitely from the offensive side last year. Uh, and that's something he doesn't put up with. He, he is a, a discipline all the way. He's going to coach. He's going to coach you hard and he's going to get the effort out of the players. So I'm excited to see how that kind of transforms the offense. Uh, just kind of putting that back in the mix. Andrew, you qualified success in 2018 as BYU winning six or seven games, going to a bowl game, and then you throw in Utah. If the Cougars can end the losing streak to the Utes, that certainly would help everybody feel better about the direction of the program. But, and I know that everybody hates it when we do this, if you had to choose one, whether it would be go to a bowl game or beat Utah, which would you choose and why? Well, those players have to live in, in Utah the whole year, so of course I'm going to say they got to beat Utah, man. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, going to a bowl game is great, and it's a, it's a, it's a reward for the players, and, and it's a great time down there, uh, you know, wherever they go. But, again, uh, throughout the whole year, you beat Utah, uh, that's, that's a huge deal for the state of Utah. Um, you know, it's interesting being in Colorado now, you don't hear a lot, you know, there's, there's not much chatter. I have to get my chatter on, on Twitter about the program and about Utah sports in general. But, uh, uh, but there, when you live in Utah, uh, you got to beat your rival. Is it, uh, are you more proud or disappointed of the fact that 2009 was the last year BYU beat Utah and it was your team that did it? Huh. That's kind of bittersweet, isn't it? Because <laughs> each year it's, uh, you feel really sad because your team lost, but you think, well, I guess – I guess one more year of being the last guy to beat them, but I would rather them beat Utah every year, to be honest. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bittersweet thing. Andrew George with us on BYU Sports Nation. Kalani Satake is known as a uh, player's coach, very friendly, uh, kind. Like it, Someone else probably has to be the disciplinary person. Bronco Mendenhall was the discipline guy, and that kind of tone was set for the rest of the team. How do you think that dynamic can work if Kalani, who's very different from Bronco Mendenhall, isn't the disciplinarian head coach, can the players govern themselves effectively with the discipline, Andrew? Uh, no. Short answer, no. So I, I spent uh, two years as a grad assistant, so I had a little taste of the coaching life. And uh, yeah. so these, these are our college-age kids. I know a lot of them serve missions and are a little more mature. Um, but still, a lot of them don't know how to manage their time, don't, don't know how to go to class. Uh, you know, they don't know how to play hard and manage their lives effectively. And that's one of the lessons you learn uh, with, a, with a really good uh, college football coach or that you can learn is, is discipline in your life and everything that you do. And I think there are, there are, there's obviously certain guys that will be able to do it. 
Uh, there's guys that are going to be they, – they are self-motivators. They're going to get it done every day. But I would say, on the whole, most guys need that added push. Uh, another disciplinarian was Robert and I, and as a player, he was really frustrating at times to play with. But as a coach, when I sat in those meetings and kind of heard the method to the madness, I understood. I knew why he did things the way he did um, because he just believed that he had to be on his players all the time to get maximum, maximum effort and maximum performance. And, and it's something that I saw firsthand. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, and perhaps Jeff Grimes can be the disciplinarian that uh, BYU football is looking for. I know that uh, you said he's respected and he kind of has that feeling. Uh, I want to finish with this. Matt Bushman seems to be one of those guys that is self-motivated that the coaches don't have to worry a lot about. He had a freshman All-American campaign as a tight end. What were your impressions of what he did in year number one at that position for BYU? Uh, number one, Matt catches the ball. He'll, he'll catch it in traffic. He's, he's a big body. He knows how to kind of box out. He's, he's an athletic guy. Uh, he can run. Um, he, uh, so, Matt, we were recruiting him when I was a grad assistant, and so I had to, a chance to see his film early on when he was a wide receiver. And he's a guy that, you know, when they asked my opinion, which didn't mean much at the time, but when they asked my opinion, absolutely. I said, this is a guy that – and that's typically what you want, somebody who runs really well but is just like a big receiver in high school – but you know is going to be a tight end at the next level. That's really what you want. And he was that guy all the way. Um, he'll continue to develop as a blocker, and his physicality in the pass game will continue to get better. And really, the more they develop outside receivers and have guys who can contribute out there, the more that's going to help Matt on the inside because uh, it's going to give the defense uh, – they're not going to be able to just key on Matt knowing that that's where the ball uh, – where the QB wants to throw every time. Andrew, your opinion matters on BYU Sports Nation. That is for sure. <laughs> I think we should make you a regular, man. Great stuff. Great to catch up with you. Hey, definitely. Thanks for having me on, guys. In Hotline Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Andrew, Strong opinions. Really good.